WCBI News at 6 starts now. Thank you for joining us tonight. A Eupora high school teacher accused of misconduct is no longer employed with the school district. Family members of an alleged victim tells WCBI News the teacher was paying for sexual favors. In a statement, Webster County Superintendent Brian Jones tells, says that on Thursday, Eupora High School administrators were made aware of alleged misconduct by an employee. Jones says an immediate investigation was initiated into the allegations. The employee is no longer employed by Webster County Schools. The school district does not plan to release any further information. Now, WCBI will not release the name of the teacher because, because charges have not been filed at this time. The Webster County Sheriff's Department tells Tells WCBI at the moment the case involves one student. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is taking full control of this case. Well, business is brisk at Allen Jones used cars in Lowndes County, but the customers are calling and coming for all the wrong reasons. They're looking for cars from a fake book, a Facebook account, rather, apparently set up and run by scammers. We talked to the owners today about what they have experienced over the last 24 hours. The phones at Allen Jones used cars have not stopped ringing. Every 30 seconds the phone rings. We've had today over five to 600 phone calls. And people in the market for an automobile have been driving in in droves. People are showing up from Birmingham, the coast, uh, Matheson, all over. The problem is the recent boom in business is the result of a scam. Someone has created a Facebook page with the name AJ Used Cars Incorporated. The page advertises cars for sale at low prices. Cars that typically cost between $15 and $20,000 are being advertised for less than $2,500. People, if it's too good to be true, it's not true. Do not fall. For, you cannot buy a $20,000 car for $5,000. It does not exist. All the information on the page is fake except the listed address, 8316 Highway 12, Steens, Mississippi. That's not AJ Used Cars Incorporated address. It's Alan Jones Used Cars address located in Lowndes County. Do not give them your email or send them any money. It is a false. And we have nothing. Alan Jones Used Cars has nothing to do with AJ Used Cars. Jones says the scam artist is collecting down payments and payments to hold cars and then sending those buyers to his business. He's contacted local authorities and Facebook and says all he can do now is wait. And it's awful. It's awful experience. We can't even run our business because of the phone ringing. And take those phone calls. Sir, it is a scam. Um, they have, we have got hundreds of phone calls about them. Yeah, do not give me your phone number or your email or send them any money. It's, it's all a scam, sir. Thank you. Jones' only concern now, what happens this weekend at his car lot? The people are sending them down payments for cars, and they t they're telling people to come pick the cars up tomorrow. Well, people that come here to our lot that have paid these people a down payment and we don't have their car, they're not going to be real happy. Now, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Department is investigating this incident. Three people are facing million-dollar bonds after a weekend shooting in Tupelo. 21-year-old Melton Garcia, 36-year-old Lawanda Whitaker, and 32-year-old Quantario Brooks are charged with felony shooting into a motor vehicle. Last Sunday, Tupelo police were called to Canal Street for a shooting. No one was injured in the shooting. Police say evidence at the scene showed multiple shots have been fired from different guns. Tupelo PD is still investigating and says additional arrests are possible in the case. Well, the search continues for two people who allegedly fired over 20 rounds into a Louisville house Wednesday night. Police there have already arrested two suspects who are believed to be accessories to the crime. Our Stephanie Poole joins us in the studio with more on this developing story. Stephanie. Yes, Andrea, the two men in custody, in custody are both being held on $35,000 bonds. They will have preliminary hearings in March. The Louisville Police Department is asking for the public's help for information that could lead them to the two other suspects. These 22 bullet holes are a constant reminder of an incident which could have easily turned fatal. It's done got that serious that they're shooting in houses. It's done got serious that we've got to get proactive with, uh, with gun violence. 
Investigator Mike Perkins with the Louisville Police Department is looking for leads to help find the gunman responsible for firing into this home Wednesday night. We're still investigating, uh, interviewing people, and getting down to the facts, but we, we are actively looking for two, individu two more individuals to actually pull the triggers. Police found several shell casings from a 9mm and a 380. When 22 bullets went into the window, one ricocheted into a resident's car. Those bullets, when you shoot them, they land somewhere. Louisville Police Chief Sean Holden says it's a miracle no one was hurt. To say I'm disappointed that people are so irresponsible to be shooting uh, uh, 20 plus times into a residence without thinking about what's on the other side of a thin wall or a window or, or whatnot is, is, is disheartening to say the least. Holden says his department will have a heavier police presence around the community to help cut down on the violence. The thought of uh, an innocent bystander being hit um, is, is too much to bear for, especially in a community as small and as uh, tight knit as Louisville is. It's a, uh, it's a residential area with a lot of kids. Uh, usually on warm days, kids are out playing. Uh, and like I said, we're trying to get to the root of the problem. Uh, our main focus on investigations and on patrol is fixing to be getting guns off the street. If you have any additional information on the shooting, please contact the Louisville Police Department. One thing I do know Hundreds turned out this morning for a time of prayer at Tupelo High School just days after a recent graduate was shot and killed. 17 year old Tiara Dancer was shot as she was in a crowd of people Tuesday night on Meadow Drive in the Haven Acres neighborhood. This morning's prayer rally was organized as a way to help students grieve and heal. More than anything about this, the whole situation the other night, we just hope that um, through this whole ordeal we can all come together and see that um, God provides peace and hope and comfort and strength for everyone uh, through these times. Dancer graduated in December and was planning to walk with the class of 2020 during graduation ceremonies this May. Overcast out there across our region right now. Now that the sun has set, you can't really see the low clouds in Columbus or Tupelo, but trust me, we still have the low clouds out there. There's Louisville, Mississippi, and also at Durham's Pharmacy in Vernon. So a bit of a gloomy evening out there. We will just call it mostly cloudy, 7, 9, and 11 here. Uh, temperatures right around 50 or the upper 40s, cooling down into the mid-40s by 11. A gradual descent here, and overnight lows down to around 40 degrees. Now, we do envision more 50s out there tomorrow. Extensive cloud cover initially as we go throughout the course of the day. The clouds thin out. High pressure comes on in for Sunday. It's looking great with even warmer temperatures. We'll talk about it coming up. Octavia County deputies make a quick arrest in a home break-in. Now Rachel Ivy is charged with residential burglary. Deputies were called to a home in the Longview community. This was Wednesday. Ivy was in handcuffs about 24 hours later. She is expected to go before a judge to have her bond set. Meanwhile, she remains in the Octavia County Jail. A traffic stop turns into a drug bust in Webster County. Christy Green faces several drug charges, including felony meth. Possession of paraphernalia and traffic violations. Last night around 9 30, the Webster County K 9 unit was asked to help with a traffic stop because of some, a suspicion of narcotics. The owner denied consent for deputies to search her vehicle, but the K 9 alerted deputies that there was something in the car. Pictured here is what deputy sees from the car. And Green is in the Webster County Jail. Her bond has not yet been set. An Amory woman dies in an early morning apartment fire. Monroe County Coroner Alan Gurley says a friend of Sherry Lackey found her dead in her apartment today. The Amory Police Department, Amory Fire Department, and EMS also found a fire that was out in the apartment. There was heavy smoke damage to the apartment. A next door neighbor says she smelled smoke about 3 o'clock this morning and thought it was a heater. A deputy fire marshal is helping the Ambry Fire Department in this investigation. Lackey's body has been sent to the state medical examiner's office for an autopsy. Two Pickens County schools are set to reopen Monday after the flu forces a shutdown this week. The schools were closed yesterday and today after a flu outbreak sidelined a number of students there. According to the Associated Press, the principal at Pickens County High School reported 70 students went home sick with flu symptoms Wednesday. Teachers and other staff spent Thursday mopping floors and wiping down desks, lockers, and other surfaces to try to disinfect the schools. All schools across the state have been hit hard by the flu over this past week. 
A longtime educator leaves a very solid legacy. We look at how she's being honored at her former school when we come back. When Dr. Alma Turner came to Mississippi University for Women in 1985 as principal for the demonstration school, she probably never dreamed the building would one day bear her name. Well, today, the space where Dr. Turner developed an elementary learning program and a gifted preschool program is dedicated as Turner Hall. It is the new home for the Department of Speech, Language, Pathology, and the Speech and Hearing Center. Dr. Turner has been a teacher to student teachers on the W campus. Her service to MUW students and early childhood education has prompted plenty of recognition, but this is special. Difficult to find words. Who would ever think of a building being named in their honor and you are alive to experience it? So I just thank God for that opportunity. It's rare that I've gotten a chance to experience this, and I just thank everyone, including my family. Students provided tours of the building after the ribbon cutting ceremony. An intersection in Octobahaw County that's been the scene of a number of accidents could get a little safer. Octobahaw County supervisors want to install a traffic light at the intersection of Old Highway 25 and Poor House Longview Road. The Mississippi Department of Transportation studied the traffic volumes in that area to determine the need. The traffic light would cost around $90,000. Supervisors say the traffic light will make travel in that area so much safer. What they did is Mississippi Department of Transportation actually did a study for us. Uh, they did traffic counts during the busiest time, which was during football season. And then they also looked at the accidents that had happened. And that way they could determine exactly what the county needed to do. The Board of Supervisors will meet Monday to determine if the county will move forward with that project. All right, a little bit of rain out there this morning, but it cleared out. It cleared out, and we are getting ready for a weekend that will actually be pretty good. I think overall, Andrea, I'm right now, forward. folks getting ready for the drive home and probably going out to many restaurants there in Starkville right now. Traffic pretty busy there. We'll have that full weekend forecast. BI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, weather-wise, here's we get ready for the weekend. What's in store? Well, I think we'll all have a case of spring fever by Sunday. What do I mean here? Temperatures going well into the 60s. And then we've had a little taste of spring fever during the course of the wintertime, but this is really going to be a great day with oodles of sunshine. A new month starts tomorrow, too. We're about average Saturday, but then we skyrocket Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, flirting with 70. Uh, the average in the low to mid 50s here. So the first part of February, a oh, well above average. The trade off here with warm air this time of the year typically means there will be some storms and some rain around. And it looks like Tuesday and Wednesday will have the chance for some strong to severe storms with this cold front that will be coming on in here. So heavy rain, perhaps several inches of rain, some gusty storms. We'll watch out to see exactly what can come out of this. But out ahead of it, spring like temperatures, as we mentioned, in the 60s and 70s. So we could see several inches of rain, one to three, certainly a possibility here, if not a little bit more. We'll just watch it after the weekend. Today in Vernon, you can see at Durham's Pharmacy, a lot of cloud cover out there today, very, very gloomy. We had a few breaks, a few teases of blue sky, but those quickly filled back in. Tonight, down to around 40 degrees. We'll call it mostly cloudy with light wind out there. And here's our plan for you Saturday. We start out at 9 o'clock at 46. By midday, 52, mostly cloudy. Uh, could there be a shower tomorrow? It's possible. We will just. Really keep that out of the forecast for now. Thinning clouds during the course of the afternoon and by the evening, we should be turning clear and that will allow temperatures to cool down tomorrow night. So this evening, we've got a mix of 40s and low 50s, gradually cooling down here to around 40 degrees. If we do happen to see a few breaks later tonight, you can briefly dip into the 30s. And then uh, tomorrow, your Saturday, notice how we'll see some more clouds, but also as we go through time, some clearing. So let's just hope that the clearing can come in sooner rather than later. We will become clear tomorrow night. That will support temperatures down into the mid 30s. And then we will rebound nicely into the 60s and 70s, or in the 60s rather, uh, for your Sunday, which is also Groundhog Day. Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania will be overcast on Sunday. So there's the groundhog. No shadow means an early spring, according to lore, but. The groundhog doesn't know anything, Andrea. No, he doesn't. And uh, this year he might, though, because we have the spring fever starting Sunday down here anyway. And the first couple of days of February, very warm. We'll just watch Tuesday and Wednesday for heavy rain and maybe more strong storms. 
Uh, my daughter and I are waiting for daylight saving to return. Oh. <laughs> That's all I'm waiting I, I just on. wish that the powers that be would decide that it's done. We just stay in one time all year. I think we need to make a trip to D.C. and tell them. Uh, it'll go on deaf ears, probably. <laughs> all right. <laughs> they don't know. Sports in Mississippi State women's basketball continues to chip away in the SEC. Sports is coming up next. I Sports with Courtney Robb is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. A huge struggle for Ole Miss men's basketball this season has been finishing games down the stretch. Five games on the Rebel schedule have been decided by two possessions or less, and only one of those games resulting in an Ole Miss win. Tuesday night's matchup against 16th ranked Auburn, the perfect, unfortunate example. Start of the second half, Ole Miss with a 19 point lead over the ranked Tigers. Fast forward to under five remaining, and it's a five point game. The Rebels' best scorer guard, Brian Tyree, fouling out, unable to play down the stretch and in both overtimes. The result? A huge missed opportunity for Ole Miss, falling to a top 25 SEC opponent, Auburn. 83-82. Despite the loss, Ole Miss head coach Kermit Davis saying he was still impressed with the team's overall performance. It was the best basketball that we've played for 20 minutes, start to finish for 20 minutes. I and mean, we, we played really, really well. And we had parts of the second half we played really well, too. You know, Auburn just made, made some plays and, like I said, got to the free throw line. Honestly, I don't know. I just, it's just our problem right now. We just can't finish games. That's simple we've been it's been an emphasis on trying to finish games but we're not going to change up like we do need to know we need to finish games but we're going to stay the same keep going hard speaking of close games against auburn the ninth ranked mississippi state women in a close one against the tigers at home thursday night auburn ranks 13 14 out of 14 teams in the fbc conference standings currently just one win in the team's name, yet Auburn led the Bulldogs until midway through the third quarter. However, MSU is still able to get the job done. They get the win 78-73 for the team's seventh SEC win. MSU head coach Vic Schaefer and his staff just happy to have another dub in the books. We do have a young group. It's unlike the last three years. And so, um, you know, as I met with my staff last night after we had our media, it wasn't perfect. We, we, we fought all the way. We got a win in the SEC. We're 7-1. and one. We're 19-3. and three. We're 8th or ninth ranked team in the country. Go home. Let's get up tomorrow, and let's go back to work. The city of Meridian will soon be welcoming two of the best young soccer players Northeast Mississippi has to offer. Over in Caledonia, Fed midfielder Claire Benson and midfielder slash forward Clara Allen signed and continue their playing careers at Meridian Community College. Despite three different coaching regimes at Caledonia in the last four years, with the help of the duo, the Feds have advanced to the second round of the state playoffs. The childhood friends are excited to just continue this next chapter together. We've been playing together since we were really young, and so we've had a lot of time to grow. Um, you know, not just in our soccer ability together, but you know, we've gone through a lot of like important life stages together, and so it's really cool that we get to go um, and kind of take on a new life stage and go to a new place. So even though we're doing something new, we'll kind of have each other to to lean on and get through that. I really never expected this to happen. It all happened very suddenly, and I I prayed about it, and I prayed about it, and I prayed about it, and you know, God just kept pointing. And, and then all of a sudden, um, you know, Claire's an outstanding soccer player, and Coach Mike, he's interested in her, and all just it all just fell into place, and I'm just on top of the world right now. Fun fact, Benson and Allen have actually been playing soccer together since they were six years old. Incredible. I can't believe they get the opportunity to go to college together and continue to be teammates. That's got to be such a special bond. I can't even imagine. And a lot of chemistry there out there on the soccer field. Yeah, you know, I'd be interested them. to see how they play next year together. I imagine a we'll be watching. good duo. We'll be watching. And big game on Sunday. Yeah, the big game mm -hmm. between the 49ers and the Chiefs. Yes, yes. We'll get picks later. I, I told you all I would do that. So we'll do that at the end of the show. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
Yeah, starting tonight, if you're looking for those lucky Powerball and Mega Millions numbers, you can find them right here on WCBI. You'll see the winning numbers just before our 10 o'clock newscast. Tonight, it's the Mega Millions numbers. Powerball will be tomorrow night, and WCBI is the only station to carry the winning numbers in this part of the state. So, again, you need to be watching Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And good luck to you. But you need a ticket. You do to need win. a ticket. You ticket do. watch, but you need to have a ticket <laughs> to win. Uh, <laughs> Tempters, here's some numbers for us. We're really going up into the 60s. Sunday's looking great. All right. And your predictions or picks or whatever for the Super Bowl, Courtney? I gave mine on mid morning. It's, mm -hmm. I'm going 49ers, 30 23. 30 23. No score, but I'm going to go with 49ers as well. All right. I'm going to go with the 49ers too because okay. Chris Ooh. Bolton, one of, one of our sports anchors and reporters likes the 49ers right. and does. Starkville 49ers has a very famous 49ers so we got to go with the 49ers. Sorry Chris Jones. <laughs> Alright everybody that is the look, that is the news rather at 6 o'clock. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. We'll see you back at 9 and 10.